Today's video has been sponsored by Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus, a tactical mobile game set in the grim darkness of the Warhammer 40,000 galaxy. Duke it out over challenging and detailed hex battlefields in turn-based tactical gameplay. Take part in fast-paced PvE campaigns, climb the leaderboards in high-stakes PvP battles, or join your guild in cooperative boss fights. Collect over 60 upgradable champions from across 15 playable factions from within the Imperium, Chaos or Xenos, including the new Adeptus Mechanicus and and ravenous Tyranids. Build your own unique teams and find new strategies while mastering the terrain of the battlefield. Play Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus on the go by downloading the game for free from the Apple App Store, Google Play or Galaxy Store by clicking the link in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hoojiwana and today everything's gone terribly wrong and we need to abandon ship with emergency escape craft. Let's define things first though. What is an escape pod? Are they the same as lifeboats? Well, I'm going to use this simple definition from Atomic Rockets that has escape pods being used by few occupants or even just one and it may be intended for atmospheric entry as well. Lifeboats and rafts can hold many people for a longer period of time and a raft is unpowered where a boat has a basic entry. Engine. Obviously these last two are lifted straight from naval terminology, but that's a common enough thing in sci-fi already. The other option for escaping a ship is to just use whatever shuttles it has on board. Depending on how big the ship is though, this option may not be adequate to evacuate everyone. It's wiser to spread your escape capacity out over the entire vessel rather than concentrating it in one spot like the shuttle bay. That said, something to consider here is how vulnerable escape craft are if they're all mounted to the exterior of the ship. This makes them liable to take weapons fire if they're on a warship, so if armour is a thing in the setting then putting them behind deployable armour panels may be a good idea. In a similar vein is where do you put them all on really big ships? If all the lifeboats are on the outside then it's going to take a while for people to reach them from the deep interior, so that goofy Viper launch tube style seen in Starship Troopers might actually be a not completely terrible idea. Going back to shuttles, they're perfect for the emergency role as they're already designed for short to medium term occupancy and have all the systems needed to support passengers. Depending on setting, they may even have a very capable propulsion system or even FTL so they can go and get help for everyone else stuck inside life rafts. You can take it a step further like in Alien with the Narcissus which is a modified shuttle in use as a lifeboat along with its twin the Samasis. These two ships are packed with supplies and equipment but what makes them stand out is the trio of stasis pods they each carried. As we can see by Ripley not being found until decades later, these pods are an absolutely vital feature in this setting and may very well be something needed for other settings too. Space is kinda empty and big after all, if you can't land somewhere habitable then your survival supplies may not carry you through until rescue. A less standard option is to pull a galaxy class and have whole sections of the ship able to separate like a giant lifeboat of its own. Sure, as a lifeboat it is very capable and people can easily survive inside it while they travel to safety, waiting for rescue. That never coming and people just living out their lives in the saucer section in space would be an interesting story actually, but I digress. If anything, it's too big, evidenced by it still having escape pods on it. It's more of an interim solution than a true emergency vehicle. Let's get back to the variety that we skipped over at the start, escape pods, specifically the get down to a habitable planet type, which has its pros and cons. First, the pro. Landing on a habitable planet dramatically decreases the life support burden on whatever pod was used, so its inhabitants can potentially survive for far longer than if they were stuck in space. Now the cons. There is an assumption that a pod will always have a habitable planet in range. This is fine for say, the International Space Station, as it's fairly unlikely that the Earth will suddenly be out of range, but for a galaxy trotting vessel that is far from a guarantee. What if it's operating around an airless moon, or in interplanetary or interstellar space? The other con is that landing on a planet can dramatically increase the search area, compared to just staying in the vicinity of an abandoned ship. That said, it's reasonable to expect that a pod will have some form of beacon to assist search and rescue teams, but there's no guarantee that those wily writers haven't found some way of rendering it ineffective. I know, I know, destroyed in the explosion. On the flip side, this con can also turn into a pro depending on the situation, as was the case during this episode of the Orville where they landed on a planet in order to hide. 
Another thing to be aware of is that pods of this type will have to be beefed up to cope with the rigours of atmospheric entry and landing, which seems like something that is just never considered. So many of this style of pod also happens to be in the realm of the flying coffin, with absolutely no space for anything except its occupant. And they so often slam into rocks too. Must be a terribly bumpy ride, but handwave sci-fi tech solves that problem. That said, it's not like any weenie escape pods are completely unrealistic. Their small size is also their greatest strength, since you can put them in places that a bigger one wouldn't fit, such as in a little ship or even an aircraft. That's right, aircraft escape pods, which are not something limited to fiction as they've been tried out a few times in lieu of ejection seats. The F-111 had a detachable cockpit that fired off as a complete unit, but its predecessor the B-58 Hustler had true escape pods. The Hustler was a strategic bomber meant to fly around supersonically at high altitudes in order to avoid being intercepted, so ejection in the traditional sense was ill-advised. The solution was fully encapsulating the seats and even flight controls of the three crew members, with each pod stuffed with an independent pressurisation and oxygen feed, a survival kit, and a parachute ready to carry it down to the surface. They also floated so they could be used as a life raft if landing in water, so these things take multiple boxes for this video. If you ever wondered how Maverick survived the Dark Star breaking up, something similar to this pod is not out of the realm of possibility. What's really neat about the B-58 pod is that it formed a technical basis for an escape system for rockets called the Emergency Global Rescue Escape and Survival System, or EGRESS. This attached all the extra bits needed to survive an ejection from even orbit, so there was a thruster package with RCS and a deorbit engine, as well as a big heat shield covering the back. Space travel never really went in the direction the engineers of the 60s were envisioning though, so such pods never had a chance to prove if they were really viable. That didn't stop those crazy engineers coming up with even more concepts though, such as a variety of single occupant inflatable capsules meant to survive re-entry, my favourite of which is Moose, which stood for Man Out of Space Easiest, which is the most pathetic backronym ever, and so got changed to Manned Orbital Operations Safety Equipment. This ridiculous thing was meant to be somewhat analogous to a life jacket, but for re-entry, and was essentially just a foam-filled bag. I'm not sure about you, but I'll think I'll take the hand-wavy escape coffin over a bin bag filled with expanding foam. None of these wacky designs ever made it to production and use, so what exactly could real-life space station occupants use if there was an emergency? Simply put, the vehicles they got to the station with. However, before the International Space Station was assembled, there were a number of proposals for specific lifeboat-style vehicles for it under the Crew Return Vehicle Program, but they never reached operational capability. Instead, Soyuz was upgraded to suit NASA standards as well as Roscosmos ones, and there was always enough of them docked to the station to allow for a full emergency return of all crew at any time. This capability has expanded beyond Soyuz thanks to the advent of private spaceflight with the likes of SpaceX's Dragon. Ultimately, I'm not sure if sci-fi does a good job of depicting escape pods or lifeboats. There's certainly some ideas that cross over with real-life examples, but in general they're more there to be part of a dramatic moment rather than a vehicle for proper storytelling in and of themselves. If there is a survival story of this type in popular sci-fi, it tends to involve a shuttlecraft for practical reasons, since there's already a set or other art assets ready to be used. Which is fair enough, but there's certainly story potential around a group of life rafts drifting together in space or some similar situation. In the end, these create the perfect conditions for deep character moments with long-lasting consequences. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.